Before you say anything, I want you to listen to me for he one minute. He stole my, my truck, and I busted his with Is she telling the truth? <laughs> Case is dismissed. But you have certain rights. Oh, wow. I know this. Is there anything you wish to say? That light was red, and you went, you went right through there. Have a big date or something? You're going to get this. You keep it up, right? This is Court in Providence. Okay, Patricia Calvert. <clears throat> Good morning, Ms. Calvert. Good morning, Judge. Let me see. I know a little bit about you, Ms. Calvert. You came to Rhode Island in 1998 from Pennsylvania. Correct. And you had a completely unblemished driving record in Pennsylvania. I then you came to Rhode Island, you, and you all of a sudden you became a hot rodder. Now you're speeding. <laughs> So, I usually set my cruise control on Blackstone Boulevard because it's very hard to go 25 on You do? Street. I do. Inspector Quinn, I don't know what to do with this case. This Ms. Calvert, <laughs> she, she hasn't had a violation forever. Should we send her to driver retraining? What do you think? Had a violation in, I'm sorry, Your Honor? Forever. Several decades. Forever and ever. Oh. I don't know. We have to send her to school, I think. All right. Sir, may I just make say more? You want to say anything to me? I, I would, actually. My husband gets called for jury duty all the time, and I always say, I'd really love to do that, and this isn't exactly what I had in mind. So, oh, you have you, my apologies. You mean you'd like to go to court? That's what you meant? I'd like to serve jury duty as part of being a citizen. And you'd like to be a judge? No, I wouldn't. What a nice lady. Let me guess. Case dismissed. All right. Evidently, you uh, you taught at Rhode Island College. I do teach at Rhode Island College. Did I do teach at Rhode Island. Are you College. still there? Yes. How long have you been there? Uh, this is my third year. I teach in the graduate program of nursing. Oh. Yeah. In, in one of my other lives, I used to be chairman of the board of governors for higher education, and, and Rhode Island I know. College was under. Uh, was under my jurisdiction. I know, it's a really good school. Yeah, oh, it's a great school. Yeah. I don't think people realize what a great bargain it is, you know? Yeah, Best Buy in the state. We have the best nursing um, graduation rates and yeah. exam rates in the state. Well, that's great. When you look at some of these colleges, it costs you $60,000 to go to. Rhode Island College is less than half that, so. That's correct. It's a good deal. Well, I'm going to take into consideration that you've never had any violations, so I'm going to... I'm going to make a determination that this was uh, – we're not going to give you a fine on this one. The fact of the matter was they charged you with doing 35 in a 25. And I'm going to tell you something, Ms. Calvert. Inspector Quinn, you'd be interested in this as well. Usually, the, the police officers will indicate the actual speed at the top of the summons, and they put that in a, in a circle. Right. And then down below – they will put the speed that they're charging you with. Well, it appears to me you were doing 35. You weren't doing any more than 35 on Blackstone Boulevard. And they still wrote you up. So <clears throat> I think taking all of that into consideration, I'm going to dismiss it outright, which means that you still have your good driving record. Thank you very much. Don't come back here next week. No, I won't, sir. All right. Thank you. You know, occasionally we have, uh, and I'm delighted the fact that this happens, occasionally we have people that come into the court who don't have a matter before the court, but who have an interest in the judicial system or an interest in the law, and they come down to observe the uh, court proceedings. So I want to welcome today uh, Annie Ward. Annie, you want to stand up? Where's Annie? Okay. Annie is... <clears throat> Annie's a student at St. Philip's School. Where's that, in Smithfield, Annie? Yeah. Okay. And Annie's here with her mom, Kristen, right? And her sister, Jenny. Hi, Jenny. And her grandparents are here as well, right? Second row. Now, I think I, think I recognize, uh, I think I recognize a grandma there, right? I was a teacher at Hope High School. Yeah, I had another. I had a whole bunch of other lives. One of my other lives, I used to teach school at Hope High School, right? And one of, and one of my lives, we used to produce great, great people like this. Okay, Annie, I've been having trouble uh, with court this morning, so I'm going to need some help. You want to come up here and help me out? All right, come on up here.
You came in here thinking this job is easy. Before you leave, you're going to know it's easy. Correct. Yao Zhu. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Uh, you were charged with speeding on South Angel and Patterson Street. You have uh, relocated from Ohio, sir, is that correct? Yeah, I just moved from Ohio last year. I'm not, so, still not familiar with this. Well, it's interesting because some people will say, well, I'm not from Providence, you know, but they're parking in a no-parking zone, or they're parking on the wrong side of the street, or they go through a red light and they'll say, well, you know, I'm unfamiliar with the area. So the, the threshold question for me is, for the two years prior to uh, 2015, did you have an unblemished driving record in Ohio? Yeah, I would say pretty good. You would, uh, I, I need a definitive answer, yes or no? Uh, Ohio, good. Yes, okay. Yeah. You understand that, that once, we, once I turned this in, that was, I could require you to bring in your record from Ohio. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take your word for it. But if you don't have a good driving record in Ohio, they'll kick it back. All right? Okay. You understand that? Okay. You got that, Inspector Quinn? Yes, Your Honor. I need to go to Ohio right after the court. <laughs> Hopefully flying. <laughs> All right. Pursuant to the statute on the good driving record, the matter is dismissed upon payment of $60 cost. All right. Thank you, sir. Looking for more Caught in Providence? Catch us on the Facebook, the Twitter, the YouTube, and the Instagram. And tell us what you think. This is Caught in Providence. Mary Lima. Mary, you're charged with speeding on Blackstone Boulevard. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, According to this, you got a Rhode Island license in 2015. In, yes. In, in November of 2015. Prior to that time, you had a speeding violation in 2014. So you do not have a good driving record. Do you have any questions? Why are you so mad? Don't get, okay. Because the officer told me I had a clean driving record or I wouldn't have come today. Oh, the officer told you I had a clean driving record? Well, yeah, I'm I turning over a new leaf coming to Rhode Island. They actually get tickets to come here to be on TV. Well, I understand you're turning over a new leaf. Actually, you have changed your, your uh, driving habits somewhat because, let's see, one, two, three, four. Between, 2000, between the year 2000 and 2005, you had three speeding violations, but that, that doesn't count. So you have changed your, your driving habits, which we're happy for. But nevertheless. I try to be vigilant on Blackstone Boulevard because of that 25-mile-an-hour um, yeah. limit. I was following the traffic that morning, well, that afternoon. <clears throat> Well, the record is what it is. Okay. Thank you. Good luck. Corey Hadley. Mr. Hadley, you're charged with uh, going the wrong way down a one-way street. This is how I know. You're in trouble because you've got two people now watching yeah. everything <laughs> you do, right? I haven't tested Annie out yet, but she may be pretty tough. I guess I'll be the guinea pig. I'm going to find out in a minute. That's fair. Okay. And you're also charged with operating your motor vehicle, failing to exercise due care. And this was on uh, George Street and Thayer Street in Providence. So, you had a violation in 2013. In July of 2013. <laughs> If you were here in another three weeks, you would qualify yeah. to have one of these charges dismissed yeah. on your good driving record. So, I'm kind of. So, Annie, let me explain this to you. We're going to find out right now. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Hadley, effective July 7th, will have been. Have, an unblemished driving record for a period of three years. That is in another 
six, that's another seven, 16, that's, that's another 23 days, right? So do you think we should dismiss one of these and give him a break because he's only 23 days short? Or do you think we should say, listen, the law is the law and there are no exceptions and we're gonna fine you to the full extent of the law? Like, what do you think? Now, it's a tough decision. Don't just board it out quickly. So we should probably pass it considering it's only 23 days short. Suppose it was 28 days. Well, that's another story. That's not what we're dealing with. So now we have to make a decision whether 23 or 28. That's another decision, okay? So I'm not quite sure. How about 25 days? I think that would be okay. All right, so you think about anywhere between 23 and 28 is okay, but 28 may be the tipping point. Yeah, probably over a month that might be. Over a month, okay. Well, I asked the question. Inspector Quinn, how do you feel about this? Uh, Your Honor, I don't know. I'm on the fence right now myself because I don't know whether she's a prosecutor or a defense attorney because she's leaning both ways. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're still mapping out her future. All right, Mr. Hadley, you have, the, you have the right to come back and have a trial on these. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. If you, if you admit the offense, then I'll dismiss the... Uh, Driving, I'll dismiss the operating uh, with failing to exercise due care and fine you on just going the wrong way on the one-way street. But you can go back and have a trial on both. What do you oh, want to do? That, that sounds fair. All right. That's what we'll do. <laughs> okay. Now it's official. Annie can say that she actually made a decision in court, and she actually now has her handwriting as part of the court record. Okay. Beatrice Rios. Morning, Your Honor. Uh, Beatrice, you were doing court on, uh, let's see, a week ago, actually nine days ago, and uh, you, uh, you didn't come to court, and, it, and your excuse is, I forgot my court date. Yes, it was true. You I mean forgot. you have other things that are more important than coming to court? Like, yes. Maybe like paying bills and going to work and stuff like that? A lot of stuff, yes. I completely forget that day. Yeah. Yes. Why would, you, why would you think of that, right? <laughs> okay. That's the bad news. The good news is that you have a good record. Thank you. So do you want this dismissed on your good record? Thank you so much. And also, I have a comment. Um, I don't miss your show every Sunday night. I always watch your show every Sunday. Yeah. I don't miss your show. I love it. <laughs> Every Sunday, I go to sleep late watching your show. <laughs> Every Sunday night, so. <laughs> yep. All right, first of all, I have to tell you something. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. But it's not a show. Mm -hmm. I know. It's a court proceeding. I'm sorry. In other words, like we, you and I have not met prior to you coming to court today, right? Yeah, no. No. No, you came into court because you got a summons to come to court. Yeah. Right? That's a court proceeding. I'm sorry. Now, all this other stuff you see on television, those are shows. I'm sorry. No, don't be sorry. I'm trying to explain <laughs> something, okay? <laughs> don't be sorry. I just, uh, there's most of the court, almost all of the court programs that you see on TV, what they do is they rehearse that. They yes. go out and they, they, they interview people and then they say, okay, they'd be good, you know, and then even the audience is handpicked, mm -hmm. you know, so that they make the right impressions at the right time, you know. And so those are, those are shows. But here, with the real deal, look, we've got Inspector Quinn, Chief Inspector Quinn. He's got the badge, he's got the gun. Yes, yeah, right? true. <laughs> My officers send out the invitations. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. He went to the FBI Academy. Do you know he graduated second in the FBI Academy on truth detection? He did. How many people do you think were in the class? <laughs> Two. <laughs> It was a master's program. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to vacate the. Uh, we're going to vacate the default. Pursuant to the statute, the matter is dismissed on the good driving record. Okay. Good luck.
Now back to the judge and court in Providence. Granfis Bellin. Mr. Bellin is charged with disorderly conduct. According to the police report, Mr. Bellin, at approximately 1.30 in the morning on June 14th, which was this morning, police were on routine patrol on Taylor Street when they saw you and another subject yelling in the middle of the street. There were two other subjects than you. Police approached you and determined there was an argument and, and you, the parties dispersed and seemed to be going their separate ways when you stopped walking and began to yell at the police officer. According to the report, you were given multiple commands to stop screaming in the middle of the street at 1.30 in the morning. As you were yelling at police, you started screaming. Uh, you wonder what you all get shot, and you use the N-word. And then you say, when I see you on the block, I'm going to shoot your ass. You're telling this to the police. Police then approached you once again and attempted to place you under arrest. Police, incidentally, exercised great restraint in this matter, and they ought to be congratulated. When police reached out to grab hold of you, you turned away from police, you flailed your arms in attempting to break free. As a result, police apprehended your placement in the police car and charged you with disorderly conduct. According to the uh, information I had before me, you have no prior police contact. Inspector Quinn, do you want to be heard on this? And uh, the offer is on the inside of the folder, Judge. I want to know what he does. Um, you want to know what I do? Yes. Uh, I work at a corner store, a meat market. Were you drinking last night? Um, yes, I was. Sir. How many drinks? Uh, but I had a few Coronas. How many? A few. I... A few too many. You know, but I was walking. I wasn't driving. You know, uh, I'm not particularly uh, pleased with this conduct. Mm -hmm. right. You had last night what I think is a uh, thing called alcoholic muscles. People get drinking, they become somebody else. Yeah. But. You are just lucky that you encountered police officers who exercise great restraint because given the circumstances here and the language that you used toward the police officers, you're lucky uh, that, that they restrained themselves because you could be in a different place right now. Uh, Inspector Quinn is making a recommendation based upon the fact that you have an unblemished record. How old are you? I'm um, 24 right now. Sir. 24, okay. So we know that at least for six years you haven't had any prior criminal conduct because you're your record begins at the age of 18. So I suspect, Inspector Quinn, that's why you're making this recommendation. That is, that is correct, Your Honor. And also in the totality of the facts that uh, the, the city did believe that he was under the influence of uh, alcohol and he has no priors and um, that was part of the reasoning behind the offer. This is your one, this is your one chance, okay? Fortunately, there was no attack. Fortunately, there was no physical force and so forth. But I was just upset by the language. Nevertheless, I'm going to accept the recommendation of Inspector Quinn and of your lawyer. The matter is going to be continued for three months. It's going to be filed. Okay. If you, if you have any further police contact, this matter will be reactivated. All right. right? And you won't be getting such a lenient uh, disposition. Do you understand that? Yes, I do, sir. Okay. The defendant pleads no low. On the recommendation of his of his attorney and with the acquiescence of the, of the prosecutor, the matter will be continued for a period of three months. So it's good luck to you, young man. All right, thank you, sir. You have a good day. You are watching Court in Providence. Jenny Mercado. Good morning, Jenny. Good morning. All right, you missed your court date. Yes, I was in traffic court. All I right. just All automatically. Right. Hold off, man. I, I, I don't know whether or not I'm going to forgive you, but I, you gave us a reason. Andy, see if you can help me out with this, okay? Now, I want you to read the reason. I want you to read it out to the court, and then let me know if I should accept it. I missed my court day because I was in the wrong court. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, 
I was in traffic court. I asked the clerk and they told me that my court was in municipal court. Please excuse me. Please excuse me for miss my court. You really can't make this stuff up. Okay, so what do you think about that? In other words, uh, you know, traffic violations are also heard at the traffic tribunal in Cranston, right? So she, on the assigned date, she did go to court, but she went to the wrong court. By the time she finished there, this court had already been adjourned. So I have two choices, right? Number one, I can say, listen, I'm sorry, you should know where you have to go. And you weren't here, so you were defaulted and you have to pay, and I don't want to hear anything else. End of story. I can do that. Or I can say, well, I understand you went to the wrong court, so I'm going to vacate the default and not look at the case anew. So what should I do? This is a tough one. Um, probably just vacate the default and look at the actual um, problem. Judge Ward here said that I should uh, vacate the default, so I'm going to do that. Thank you. World's nicest judge, world's cutest kid. Hi, this is Savannah, and I'm my friend Samantha, and we think Judge Caprio is like a banging judge, and uh, he's mad cool, he's outgoing, and he's keeping the good work. I think the judge is doing a good job. And I wish there was a more judges like him around Rhode Island. Thank you. Hi, I just watched the show. I come from England. And I think we need more judges like you in England. Hi, I think Judge Capio is doing a fine job. All you people calling up and complaining. You're not behind the bench doing that job. It's a lot tougher than you think. Judge Capio, you're cool. I'm Frank O'Donnell. Tune in next week. And until then, don't get caught in Providence.